Okay, let's get started. This is just some extra verbal instructions for doing the annotated bibliography. Everything you need is in the written directions, but sometimes I know it's easier to get a handle on things when you're looking at the directions and also verbally hearing them. Okay, so we are now starting your final project, the annotated bibliography, which is going to be finding sources related to the career you've been working on this semester and um, finding those sources and then putting them in MLA format and then writing an annotation, so a discussion of that source. Okay, I like to um, start out by showing you an example and then we'll go to the directions. Um, please know the examples are not the directions. These examples here that I'm clicking on are examples from other classes on different topics. They don't actually um, have anything to do with what's due in your course, except where they're a visual example of what your annotated bibliography should look like. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so it's the example here is in two parts. There's the, um, I'm going to show you the final annotated bibliography. This first part you guys actually aren't doing. You're doing the full annotated bibliography. Um, so let's go ahead and click on that. Okay, so your first page is going to be an MLA formatted summary page where you are going to tell me about your chosen career, um, tell me about the research you're going to be doing on that career, um, maybe what your interest is in that career. Um, as you can see here, we have MLA formatting, last name, page number, and then your proper MLA formatted uh, heading, okay? And then you're going to put in the title of your, um, what your research paper is going to be about, really. So whatever your career is, um, just come up with a title, not just annotated bibliography. Okay, and then you're going to start with your summary. Excuse me for this thing. You're going to start with your summary, um, telling me about what it is you're going to be re researching about your career. That's usually, as you can see, about a paragraph long. And then we're going to start again on the second page with the annotated bibliography. Remember that MLA titles are centered and all major words are capitalized. Again, last name, page number. And then you're going to go through and start your annotations. Um, so this is, this is what they look like here. These are going to be in alphabetical order and you're going to label what the resource is. So you and I are on the same page with what you're looking at. And I know what you, you are trying, what you're citing. Okay, sometimes people put a newspaper instead of a magazine or something like that. So it helps me to know what you consider your source to be. Um, but I, I do want them in alphabetical order. So you're not putting them in source order, you're putting them in alphabetical order. Okay, so now you can see that here we have our MLA citation done correctly. Okay, and then you're going to talk about the resource here, this is a summary of the source written by you, not a summary taken from the database or from an Amazon summary, that kind of thing. I want you to write it in your own words. And then you're going to come down in the second paragraph and talk about what, um, how this is going to be used in your research. And in the third paragraph, you're going to talk about how you found the resource. Okay. And, the, um, and then you're going to put a link to the resource. I'm going to talk to you about each of these parts separately, but I kind of want you to have a visual in your head as we go through the directions. And then you start with your next source. And then your next source, and so on and so forth. And when you're finished, you're going to do an edit for clarity and for um, any grammar spelling issues and save it as a um, document and attach it into the assignment. As I said, I'm going to go over this step by step, but just to give you an idea of what you're working on. The other thing, um, let's see, I'm going to think of things that people usually ask me. How long does this have to be? Uh, my stock answer is, is as long as it takes. It really depends on you as a writer, if you're a concise writer and can get everything in that I need and is detailed enough and is 
um, appropriate to the assignment, great. If you're a little more wordy, then yours is going to be longer. What I don't want is a bunch of filler. This was good because it talked about my career in nursing, and that's why I like it. Okay, as you can see in these examples here, there's much more detail in why you chose it for your research, how you found it, and what the source is about. Okay, so back here to the directions. Okay, so here are the directions. So for this assignment, you are going to be locating six sources and creating annotations for each of those sources and evidence for each of those sources. So the first part's that summary page that we talked about. Okay, here's, here's your topic description. Why have you chosen this career for your eye search? Why are you interested in the career? Okay, and then you're going to start your annotated bibliography. So your first source is um, one full text book. And I should actually put a hyphen there. I'll go put a hyphen in there. This is not a textbook for your class. Oh, it's a full text book. So meaning I don't want you going to Amazon and just having the summary. I want you to actually have the full text of the book, whether that means it's in your hand from the library or from home, or it is an eBrary book from the databases. Okay, so you can use an eBook or you can use a um, regular print book. Just remember that the citations for those two items are different. Okay, so if you use an eBook, you need to use the proper eBook citation. Um, so really, I would hit eBrary, which we've already used, uh, if you want to use an eBook. Okay, so you're going to create an MLA citation, and then you're going to do those parts of the annotation that I already discussed. Two to three sentences describing the content of your book or book chapter. So a summary. Two to three sentences on the relevance. Oh, this thing's killing me. The relevance of your book to your research project, to your career, um, and then how you located it. And then you're going to provide evidence, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and then three articles from the SCC databases. So this is a little different than the example. I just changed this for this class. I want to move away from where I have you choosing specific articles like a scholarly journal, newspaper, magazine, as which we've traditionally done. I just want you to find any three articles from an SEC database. Um, I, if you can find a professional journal for your career, that would be great. Um, I think it will be good for you to see what professional journals are written in your career um, area. But three articles from an SEC database, they must be full text. They must not be from Google. Okay, I know you guys know how to find a website. We're not, I'm not testing you on that. So make sure you're doing proper MLA database citations. And then again, after you do that citation, you're going to go through and do two to three sentences on the content of the article, of um, how it's going to work with your eye search, and a description of how you located the article. And you're going to do that three separate times. Okay. And then you're going to find two authoritative websites. And this can be from Google, open websites. Um, I'm going to give most points to websites that are from the professional association related to your career. Okay, um, Most careers are going to have a professional association. The uh, Association of Landscape Painters. For me, it's the American Library Association. So look around for that a bit and then find another website that has to do with your career. Um, again, you're going to do your MLA citation and let's see if that gets it to stop. You're going to do your MLA citation and your summary and how you found it, but you're also going to evaluate both of your websites. See this in red. So this is back, I believe, in Unit 3, that CARS or crap evaluation. So I want to know why it's a credible resource um, and why it's relevant to your research. And um, mostly I want to know credibility, why it's a credible resource. So go through and look at the About Us. Is this the actual association for your professional, your choice of your profession, or is this just somebody deciding they want to be your, your association? Um, Again, there's another example here of what an AB should look like. Do remember the directions are different. For example, you're going to see 
um, the headings of what type of sources people used in the example and I actually am having you choose any three database articles. Um, so don't forget your summary page. These are things that I see people missing often. So don't forget your summary page. On your works cited, don't forget hanging indents. Um, do not forget italics for database names and italics for book titles or for um, periodical titles. We do not underline any longer in MLA. Um, the medium means what sort of source is it. I like to think of it if I can hold it, if I'm holding it in my hands at that moment when I'm doing the citation that it, um, well, that it's a print item, but if I'm looking at it on my computer, it is a web item. Unless you're citing from the SNAP catalog, that, consider that a print citation because I assume you're going to be getting a hold of the book. Um, so that would be a print citation. Um, you're not going to want to cite SCC Find It, which isn't working very well right now. So one search is going to be a better option for you. Um, don't cite those. That's just like citing Google. You want to cite the database you actually get to. Okay, and an ebook, you need to do an ebook citation. Um, and then sufficient details in your annotations, and do not forget to evaluate your websites. Everybody forgets to do it, and it's a loss of points. Um, double space the entire thing, and then don't forget your evidence. I really, really, really mark you down for not having evidence. It's quite hard to pass without it. I don't want to have to go look and check your sources myself. I want you to have provided me with the evidence. So. Let's skip ahead real quick to how to provide evidence. Okay, so each of the databases has um, a stagnant URL, a permanent URL that they will provide that you can turn in to me. It is not this. So do not turn in the URL from the address bar. This changes and um, will not link me where I need to be. You need to go and find the actual document URL. Um, in ProQuest, it's, it's, it's down towards the bottom of the article. It'll say document URL, and you're going to take it from here. EBSCOhost, which I think a lot of you will end up using with one search, you just click on permalink down here on the side of the article, and you paste that in. Okay, I'm going to have three of these from you from separate databases, and then here's an example of how to do it from Gale. Um, and then here um, are how you do a website, obviously just the regular URL, an ebook. Um, you are you copy and paste. You can actually copy and paste the URL for the ebooks and uh, library library web address. So when they when it says last paragraph for the book here, it just means at the end of your annotation. Okay, you can also um, use your cell phone and take pictures of things and attach it. I don't care if you get creative, I just want to be able to see the resource. Again, if you have questions, just ask. Okay, so actually I want to go down to the bottom here. Okay, so here is a guide. Um, to citation tools in the databases. A lot of you like to use um, the databases to do your citations. Um, I think I had this posted earlier in class, but I'm putting it here again. So you can scroll through and it will talk to you about each database and the citation tools and how to use them. Just remember you need to check your citations. I don't care if you use these tools, use EasyBib, just make sure you're double checking that the citations are correct because if they don't do it correctly, that means you're not doing it correctly and you'll lose those points. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to that example page and okay, so here's that example annotated bibliography again. Um, here in the citation, so just the things I said to watch out for. Remember, here is your hanging indent. Look at the direction that the hanging indent goes. It goes this way to the right. Sometimes people make that backwards. See, we have ProQuest Research Library italicized here. 
and then those evidence links, okay? So those go there. All right. Um, okay, some other helpful things I have here. Again, here's that illustrated guide to using the citation tools in the databases. Uh, the checklist for establishing credibility. Remember how I said that people miss that part of their websites? Here's a checklist. You don't actually even have to go back to that unit. You can just use this checklist. And then here is my Super Techie MLA cheat sheet, which I did with a Sharpie. That's why I call it Super Techie. Okay. But what I want to point out to you here is this is a paper citation for a book. And then here is your citation for an ebook. So you're going to see her put the database, which will probably be eBrary, but not necessarily. Um, and then your magazine, newspaper, journal. As I said, you can do any three articles. Don't get tripped up because the examples um, have each of these separately. In this assignment, I said any three database articles. You could have a magazine, newspaper, journal. You could have three magazines, three newspapers. Um, I would love to see professional journals from your professional area choice if you can find them. Okay, and then here's a website citation. Okay, so I think that's about it. Um, let me go back and look one more time. Thank you for bearing with me on this. I uh, really do prefer to come in and do this with you, but I've got some stuff going on at home that I need to deal with. Um, okay, so turning in your assignment. So completed um, final annotated bibliography. You're going to click on this. It's hopefully going to open. Okay. And then you're going to go to um, submit assignment. You have until 11.55 p.m. You're going to choose your file. So then this becomes just like adding an attachment. If you're using anything besides Microsoft Word, um, please make sure you're saving it as a .doc. Um, I think I have it set, or you can save it as a, as a .rtf, um, as a rich text file. Just I can't get open anything that's been do, done on um, MacBooks and saved in the MacBook. I can't remember what that's even called. It'll come to me. But um, I can usually get Google Docs open. So um, just make sure you're, you're saving it as a proper Word document so I can get it open. And then you just hit Submit Assignment. Okay. So this is the point where I would ask if you had any questions. My plan is I'm going to put up a question and answer um, section so you guys can post questions and I will check it and um, maybe you guys can help each other answer questions as well. So I'm hoping to kind of have an in-class in sort of discussion that way. And I really think that that is about it. I will write you guys if I think of anything else. All right.